I'm here at Discover Bucks as part of Bucks Heroes with Jennifer and Jessica Gadarova. Would you like to introduce yourselves? So I'm Jennifer Gadarova and I'm Jessica Gadarova. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So we're here for you to tell us a little bit about your journey to um, how you've got to where you are now. Um, so we started gymnastics when we were six years old, just doing it for fun, messing around and just burning off some energy. And then just slowly, slowly we started to progress uh, into the squad and then further up into the squad. And then um, I made England squad and then uh, Jess made, and then we both made England squad together. And, and then I got the reserve spot for GB squad as well. And then the year after that, we both made GB squad and been there ever since. So the first time we made it into the GB squad together, we were second year juniors, which is like quite late for making a squad. And like loads of people have been there since they were like nine, ten years old, and we were like fourteen, ten, and fifteen. So it's like very different, but it's nice showing that anyone can make the squad. And then uh, coming up into the senior ranks, we were like one of the strong contenders but also not we were like known to be quite good but uh in the senior ranks it was kind of difficult to see if we make teams or not and then obviously covid hit which was um a struggle but we used that time wisely to gain more fitness strength and that definitely uh, benefited us through olympic trials and then we made it to the olympics and then all the success for all the other championships afterwards as well. And how, how did you train through COVID? Where did you train? What did, how did, what did it look like? Um, so our training was quite intense. Um, we did bring a little bit of equipment back with us to help us keep us moving. And we did just loads of bike rides, loads of running, loads of fitness and a lot of Zoom sessions as well. So we could always speak to our teammates and speak to our coaches as well. How do we tell you apart? Um, so the obvious one we always say is Jess has a little freckle right there and I don't. So then they'll just be like, oh, Jess has a yeah. freckle and Jen doesn't. But um, facially, we have different shaped eyebrows and faces, but it's hard to tell from far away. So we just go with the freckle. Yeah, but then the freckle is also a bit hard to tell from far away. But... I think when we were younger, we would always just say the little freck on the head. But I think now that we've grown a bit older, we kind of say, like, different smile, different eyebrow shapes and different face shapes as well. So what's it like being 18? Happy birthday for your 18. You. Uh, what's it like being 18 and also doing everything you do with balancing school, friends, training, competing? It's quite a lot. Um, just still doing school and still doing gym at the same time and also being an adult as well so taking a more responsibility for yourself and um, there's quite a lot but we're managing it well yeah we get a lot of support from our teachers to keep up with school work and then a lot of support from our coaches to still be able to do the high level skills uh we need to do for the big competitions and also support from our family as well just they're always there for a nice chat or to lift us up as well. And who's in your family? Um, uh, so we have uh, like two sisters, an older brother and a younger brother, and our mum and dad. But lovely. then we also consider our um, coaches and their partners our, as our family as well. Lovely. And, and is, it, is it challenging with friendships and how that works? And... Yeah, I would say it's quite hard because um, or especially with school friends because we're always in the gym and sometimes we're out of school for a long time so it's kind of hard like keeping that friendship and I definitely know through Covid like we couldn't see the friends as much because we were self-isolating and we decided to do um, our school work remotely from home during the Olympics so friends started to fade away and then it was just um, us two left. And then but... after that, it was we moved to sixth form, so most of our friends like moved away to other schools. So, but it we was... do have a lot of friends in the gymnastics world, which is nice. And we're best friends anyway, so hmm. we help each other out. 
What does your weekly routines look like? Do you have to wake up really early to train? We don't actually. We um, wake up around 8 every day, Monday to Friday, but then the weekends we can wake up whenever we want. Um, but then we get to school at 8.30 besides from Fridays, which we do a morning session, which it starts at 9 o'clock. But um, I would say Monday and Wednesdays, we do come out of school early to do afternoon sessions and evening sessions. But then Tuesdays and Thursdays are evening sessions. However, on Friday, we do one morning session, and go to school, session. and then come back to gym for the evening. And our evening sessions would like mostly start at half four and finish at 9 p.m. And it is a long session, but we do get all our work done and it just helps us to be where we are now. And we'll finish training, get back home, eat food and probably be in bed at like half ten and repeat it for the next day. Can you tell us of any challenges you've experienced? Well, you've mentioned some already during COVID, but have there been any particular challenges that each of you have felt, um, either professionally or personally? Um, when I was younger, I used to have uh, quite a few mental blocks and I feel like um, like sometimes I'm struggling with skills at the moment, but my coaches and my friends are really helping me push through it and getting back to where I need to be. And also, I think due to like home and situations, we did stop doing gym for around six months, but then it was a bit difficult for us to come back, like just a new city, a new place, and our mum just uh, dragged us into the gym and said, you're doing it, you've spent six years of doing it, like, you, you have to carry on and try. No matter what happens, if you want to do like two months and say, no, I don't want to do gymnastics anymore, but I'm so grateful that we still managed to come back in the gym because none of this success will have ever come. And I think also it came from our coaches because um, they made us fall in love with gymnastics again and show us how much we enjoy the sport and I'm just great at it. But what was it, what's it like to have people looking at you, competing in competitions, winning the Olympics, we've talked about the Olympics a lot, um, becoming BBC Young Sports Person of the Year, what, what's it like to have people looking at you doing those things? It's, it's so crazy to see and hear as we were little girls once and we looked at so many people and now to think that people are asking for our autographs or shouting our names, it's kind of surreal and we have to take a step back to appreciate the journey that we've come and appreciate that everyone is supporting us around us and care for us and it's just mind blowing and just, it's so great to hear. Exactly what Jess said, like we were young girls looking up to big people and now we're one of them people so we're using this to inspire the next generation to get into any sport or just be active and just have fun really and it's, we feel so grateful to be in this position to help others uh, with their future and the opportunities that it's given us like BBC Sports Personality and being able to go to the big competitions we are at now. And who, you mentioned people you look up to, is there anybody by name you can mention? Is that... Well, as in gymnastics-wise, we kind of looked at Simone Biles due to like her power, the amount of medals she won and how she composes herself in competition. But I would say mainly we kind of just looked up at one another, like we were always together, so we just kind of looked at each other and tried pushing each other, so my inspiration is Jen. Yeah, and I think like, just our coach has always been there to motivate us and push us on and just go that extra mile to help us where we are now. What's it like to be there together as sisters? It's, it's amazing being able to experience like the incredible things we have experienced. It's just so nice to be able to share it with someone you're so close with. <laughs> yeah, and we've been together uh, since we were born 24-7. There's no like separating us, so uh, just to go on this amazing journey with her is just truly amazing. Do you ever fall out? Yes. <laughs> and what's it usually, what do you usually fall out about? Um, it's just like petty silly things. things. And, um, I think as we're getting a bit older, like we do have a few more arguments in the gym and our coaches do get a bit frustrated, but 
I Even, think I, I think that's normal sometimes, but we're trying to be better, trying not to argue as much, but it's hard when you with someone all the time, at home, at gym, at school, so. But even like at home as well, I think we're like growing up and want more of our personal space and we're sharing a room at the moment, so it's kind of hard having that space for yourself, but I still love her to bits anyway, so we do <laughs> argue, but we do make up anyway. So when, when you stay in hotels, do you always ask for separate rooms? No, no, no you yeah. still we share. still share. Oh, that's lovely. What are your hopes for the future, either personal or professional? What do you dream about? Um, I just dream about having like a successful uh, journey ahead of me and if I can help other people along the way and just um, just seeing the future change in gymnastics and in Ellsbury as well. Like So many things are coming along and um, I just want to see a great and bright future ahead. I would say the same with Jess and I think personally just growing bigger as a person, being stronger and fitter and just being the best gymnast I can be. I believe you've brought us something to see. Yes. <laughs> wow, so these are the actual medals. Yep, so this is the... A uh, silver medal we got at, um, at Worlds, part of the team. Yes. This is the bronze medal I won in the all-around at the World Championships in Liverpool this year. This is the Olympic bronze medal that uh, we won at Tokyo in 2021 and as a team. And we did it as a team. And then this is my gold world championship medal uh, in Liverpool as floor champion. So that's quite a collection. Do you sometimes compete without each other? Yes, uh, yeah, sometimes we do. And it just depends on if we're both selected to the team or if one of us is, or if it's like an individual World Cup that one of us is selected to. So, um, luckily, most of this year we competed together, but there has been a few times we have competed without each other. And, and does the other go along to support if they can oh, when you compete? Yeah. How does it feel not to be um, with the other? Is it? Do you feel okay? Um, is it? I feel it's, like yeah. it's different, but. I think we do have other people around us to support us, so we're not feeling like we're missing each other as much. And what one thing would you say to other young people in Buckinghamshire to inspire them, to inspire them for their goals and their hopes? I would say just give it a go. Like, uh, if you give it a go and you don't like it, you can stop. But um, if you never take that leap of faith, you'd never know what you'll be missing out on. Yeah, I would say just try new things and have fun and, yeah, just try new things, keep going and see what inspires you and makes you have a fun time. And also, um, just be you, don't let anyone or anything change you, just be you and um, enjoy and embrace yourself. So what do you think when you think of Buckinghamshire? I think it's a beautiful region and... It has so much to offer, so many beautiful landmarks and beautiful fields and great people as well. So I think it's such an amazing place and uh, a lot of people should come see it more. And I think like that's where we live, it's our home now and our friends and family are here so that's what we think of it. Do you get time to go around Buckinghamshire much when you're travelling and uh, going to places? Yes, we do travel around the world, but we don't really travel much around Buckinghamshire, so maybe one day if we have time. We do visit some places that we have been up to the towns and seen like other places, but I think it would be nice to explore more of it. And also to see this beautiful museum as well. Anything else you want to tell us that you have learnt for yourself along your journey that would help others? I think for me, I would say just trust the process. I 
when I was young, I used to struggle with a lot of skills. So, but then I kept pushing and pushing, and um, there's always light at the end of the tunnel, and it's just trusting your mind, your body, and the people around you as well. Yeah, I can agree more with what she said. I'd just like to say thank you. Thanks for being here with us. You're very welcome. Thank you for having us. And to say you are both real Bucks heroes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.